Three angled parasols adorn the open cafe Carino along the plaza. At first I thought the name might have something to do with curry, but it's the Italian word for cute. The logo has a red, a yellow and a green parasol. It gives off the atmosphere of a nice Italian place. One cup of coffee costs 360 yen. Wow, that's expensive. The streets fill with light red sunbeams. The vivid color of the burning sky just before it transitions into night resembles Rondo herself. Thanks for showing us around on such short notice. I learned a lot. Yeah, it's good. This tastes like proper coffee. She looks proud. I feel like I've been shown up, but it's not that bad. I walk by this place a lot, but I've never gone in. I'm so used to the street that I don't pay much attention to what's on it. There are some surprisingly good things waiting to be discovered in your backyard. Are you a sadist? The cruel witch stands up after spewing her, spewing her poison. The witch's smell lingers in the empty seat. Everyone says that this is normal for her, so I'd give up on correcting it. That would be terrifying. No, just childhood friends. That seems kind of right, but still off. What makes you say that? You're talking about girl A's selection process now? So, you She's a woman who walks outside alone at night. She's already a rare exception. Yeah, Kagome is invincible. Her hands stop holding the teacup in the air. What? What does that mean? <laughs> Say what? Don't be stupid. I savor the last of the espresso, a strong bitter taste. I enjoy the nice smell of Italian coffee as my eyes wander around the plaza. A young couple making out on a bench, a pair of girls heading to the east exit. Street dancers making loud noises as they use the pavement like a canvas. Calm slips its way into me, I'm shaking for no particular reason. There is no distinction between normal and abnormal days. It's a matter of opinion or interpretation. Either you live normally and dream of something abnormal, or you get sick of the abnormal and want what's normal again. I have known that for a very long time, but... Silly couples talk, an amateur band making countless mistakes, a stray dog whimpering for food and an old man throwing him bread. Those meaningless things stir my heart. Rondo, have you been a connector for long? That's not as long as I thought. You seem to know the community a lot better than that. It seems weird for you to talk about putting effort into things. Rondo's the type who seems like she does everything with graceful perfection. You're living proof of that. I respect you. She looked composed before, but I think she liked the compliment. People who act noble tend to have a childish side. Kimizuka Iroha felt rough around the edges at first, but, I, but now I can understand why Rondo triggers her maternal instincts. Rondo. 
A girl I don't recognize runs toward us. She's wearing a blazer uniform with a cool design, which means she's from one of the all-girls schools near here. According to some people at Isalon, eh, that uniform is very popular with a certain crowd. No comment as to what crowd. Hi, Ikuhara. She waves to the girl like a scene from a movie. So Rondo goes to an all girls school, huh? I wonder if she attends the same school as Benio. An acquaintance of Rondo's, I mean classmate. Unlike her, this girl has glasses and seems like the nice quiet type. She's normal enough that you might not even notice her if there were ten others next to her. She notices I'm here and bows slightly. She looks between me and Rondo, her eyes holding an appropriate bland of unease and suspicion. I'm Mizuwa, the friend. But it's cute, don't you think so? Another bow, she lowers her head awkwardly. Ikuhara continues looking down but examines me with her eyes. She reminds me of a small animal alert for threats. ああ、明日は学生らしく過ごすことにする。じゃあ、待ってる。あ、こんな時間だ。今日はもう行くね。用事。あ、そっか。行くはらのまま。元気を出して。胸を張って歩け。しょげてないで笑いなさい。行くは
A far darker color than Rondo's jacket, the smell of rusted iron. As it gets even darker, it loses the heat and color of life. For some reason, I can't bear to look at Rondo. My eyes wander aimlessly. Lots of people are crossing through the plaza. Students, salary men, housewives, middle-aged men with tired faces, dogs, the elderly. Countless lives briefly crossing each other, momentary connections between strangers. Most of them are severed without holding any meaning. Connections don't always bring reward. They can bring pain, calamity and malice. They carry all sorts of things. Someone's gaze pricks my skin. A young man on the other side of the plaza is watching me. Before long, another man joins him. The first points at me and glares. They quickly exchange words. I feel strangely uneasy. A man no different from the others, filling the city, wearing the same young fashion as the others loitering around the station. And yet I feel a murky spark of animosity from him. <laughs> What's wrong? Rondo stands up, knocking her chair over. Before I can say anything, she grabs my hand and runs off. Rondo, watch us! <laughs> I see movement from another direction. My mental radar fills with red klaxons. Something very bad is happening. Kagome hasn't come back yet. Rondo rushes out of the cafe, dragging me behind her. There's no time to pay. I continue running behind her. We pass through several intersections, alleys and main streets. Both of us are losing breath. We slip into the darkness of a back alley between old buildings. Unfortunately, it's a dead end. <laughs> Weren't you trying to run away from them? I can't believe this. Rondo, Rondo looks cool on the outside, but can't plan her way out of a paper bag. Kimizuka's warning was accurate. Dealing with her might be exhausting. I hear several footsteps from the entrance to the alley. With the street light behind them, their long shadows reach deep into the darkness. I see four, five in total. The same guys I saw in the plaza. Oh no, voice acting. I knew it! I found you! Remember what you did the other day? We had quite a bit of fun too. The brown-haired man with an earring looks like the group's leader. Rondo's words do nothing to him. Nice! You're the tough type. I like him that way. The others behind him wince. Rondo shows no hesitation to throw mud in his face, though she really shouldn't be in this situation. So much for that. You've got a boyfriend anyway, so there wasn't much I could do. Still, we did lose a man back here there. Sorry, but I can't let you go home without paying for that. So we squash you like a bug. You are not getting away today. Tear them apart, Banco! His bloodlust is so thick you can cut it with a knife. It changes into blue light over his head. The swirling bluish-white gate light tears through the alley's darkness as the avatar comes down. There are connectors. Rondo, what did you do? <laughs> Even in this situation, Rondo simply sighs. The sound when it lands is much smaller than you'd expect given its size. Its silhouette blocks all the light from the city reaching deep into the alley. An agate giant, a pentagruel. You really piss me off. Let's see how you handle pain. Laughter comes from behind the giant. The pentagruel just barely fits in the narrow alley. It moves with both hands and feet, almost crawling. Its steel throat roars. A roar only connectors can hear shakes the alley. It looks like an animal, but it towers far over us humans. It raises one arm like a three, uh, tree th trunk, preparing to squash our tiny human bodies. No ordinary human can block that attack. But Babylon. My thoughts finally catch up with the situation. The giant's arm above is about to pulverize us. 
The wind roars as the Iron Hammer of Death approaches. The giant stumbles, three spears attack at once, it's off balance. The Pettigrew stoops down, awaiting the spare tips. Spear. The creature that blocked the steel arm stands between us and the giant like a shield. A bizarre form, making it hard to call it an object. The body is constructed out of countless gears and geometric shapes. The same fantastic avatar that appeared the night we saw Sting. A burrows. Dinner no jikan yo. Miss JH. Rondo's avatar, Miss JH. Burrow's avatars are even rarer than Georgios. It's essentially the miscellaneous category covering everything that doesn't fit in the other categories. Thus, the difference between individuals are greater for Burrow's than any other category. You could say Miss JH is a typical Burrow's in a sense that it has nothing in common with any real animals and feels as inorganic as a bronze sculpture. Instead of a head, it has a sculpture of a woman like you would see on the bow of an old wooden ship. Three spears flash. The tips of Miss JH's three appendages they are moving in such strange ways that it doesn't feel like they are aiming at anything, but neither avatar has much space to work with in this alley. The giant's legs stop when one spear passes just in front of its nose. You're controlling it that well by yourself? Rondo is furrowing her brows, forming deep riches in her temple. She's focusing so hard it hurts. Despite that, I can clearly see Miss JH's movements aren't as tight as they should be. She blocked that first attack with its armor, but Burrows aren't good at close quarter fighting. Plus, an avatar's capabilities depend on the number of people connected to it. It's one versus five, few versus many. Rondo doesn't have much chance of winning this head on. This way! This time I grab her hand and run. <laughs> Calm down and think, you can't win this fight! <laughs> Miss JH follows us. With nothing in its way, the Pentagrill naturally gives chase. These men can't hide the fact that us running away whets their appetite. We hear their laughter behind Pentagrill's charge. We run through narrow alleyways, I turn right. I head in without turning back. It's a dead end. All the alleys around here are like that. I know, just focus on controlling your avatar. Miss Jade follows from behind and behind it the sounds of a giant come closer. I wait for the right moment and... Come, Babylon! The moment the giant turns to the corner, Babylon swings its tail even though half of it is still inside the gate light. The gate giant slams into the wall of a building several times louder than a traffic accident. That's not enough to destroy an avatar. I'm controlling Babylon by myself too. I'm not a super cyborg like Kagome or a mad dog like Izawa, so there is not a lot I can do in a 5 on 1 fight. Not to mention... Babylon's heavy. The same weight I felt when fighting Gasai. After leveling up from Jack the Ripper, Babylon's even harder to control than before. Like a car modified so much it's practically an F1. And no one can use it as a passenger vehicle anymore. The more it levels up, the stronger it gets, but the harder it is to control. Con uh, Rondo's voice carries a tone of awe to her the black dragon she stumbled across one night is still little more than a legend. Babylon pulverizes the walls of the at Jack and buildings. They collapsed into the rubble, giving off thick clouds of dust. The LA is filled in an instant. Now, run for it! Against an avatar, that's only going to buy time. Use your head, princess! We make it to the roof. 
We grabbed onto Miss J.H.'s white bony arms and let it fly us out of the alley. That felt a little like an action movie. I unsummoned Babylon too. If I have to summon it again, that'll be a waste of magic, but oh well. For the most part, only Burroughs and Caspar avatars are capable of flying. Pentagruels are especially heavy, so even if it jumps, it won't be able to get up here. Idiot. It's an avatar, they can just resummon it up here. That aside, it's still hard to fight an avatar you can't see. Since they're down there, they can't see us, so we should be able to get away. We should, but... I hear something fly through the air. A neon sign on a nearby building suddenly explodes. Roaring air, scattering stone, the shockwave hits us like a tornado, knocking me and Rondo out of Miss J.H.'s arms and onto a roof. What? I pull myself up the moment my thoughts finally catch up with the situation. A second shot. This time the generator room next to us explodes. The windows shatter, unable to withstand the pressure. The shock wave, the heat and the glass form a whirl whirlwind. Casper type avatar, what's that thing doing here? Oh, there's a black scar on the wall of the generator room, as if it just withstood an artillery shot. Actually, it did. There's a long-range avatar bombarding us from farther away than we can hope to reach. The shots are supersonic, so I don't hear them until after they hit. Is this that giant special ability? It's possible he has allies here. Are these guys the type that don't care how much damage they cause? Rondo fled out from the cafe to avoid putting it in danger. From long range, it's easy to blow away an enemy before they know where you even are. Wanting what's not here isn't going to help us. They have distance on their side, that alone is a wall preventing us from counterattacking. Whoever it is, they are more dangerous than the giant. I pull Rondo's hand and run again. The princess is surprisingly high maintenance. Maintenance, an extremely dangerous long range type. There's no way for us to attack them from here. Our best bet is to head back into town and try to lose them. We can! Those guys are amateurs. It takes practice and experience to use an avatar well. It's not that hard to practice beating things up with a close-range avatar, but there aren't many suitable places to do target practice with a long-range one. This enemy has the will and the power, but not the experience. The fact that they couldn't kill us with two shots gives that away. Run, we we'll use your avatar to get back down. We run, we run, we run. We are near our limits, but we keep running. Rondo is out of breath. Miss JH is wobbling as it moves alongside us. She's controlling it alone. Precise movements are impossible. There is no way to know if she'll even keep it heading the right way. When will the third shot come? Steel supersonic torpedoes. They may not be that accurate, but they only need to hit us once. And each firebomb is more accurate than the last. The next shot, or the one after, will probably hit. If it even grazes us, we'll be minced meat. There'll be nothing left if it hits us dead on. Bringing out Babylon would only give them a bigger target, and risk the lives of the other four. The situation's so bad, my hair stands on end. Despite that, I shake off my fear and run. Humans are just sacks of flesh against an avatar. I continue putting Rondo's hand as she gets overwhelmed by her own powerlessness. She clutches her heart as if it's about to give out. I know my odds of survival go up about 30% if I abandon her, but I don't even consider letting go. To survive, we just need to sprint to the edge of the roof before the next shot comes. <laughs> Miss Jage breaks through the fence. The last two spe steps, we run. I grab onto one of Miss J.H.'s gear-like parts. My muscles scream, but I pull myself up anyway. I feel myself floating. Miss J.H. moves down from the roof. <laughs> the moment Rondo takes that last step, the third shot. It hits. Rondo is blown forward by the explosion behind her, flying off into empty space. Rondo's arms flail meaninglessly in the air. 
She doesn't even have the strength left to make her avatar catch her. Rondo falls. I reach out from Miss JH's arm. Reach! Damn it! A red color, a metal bridge falling. But this time, I won't. I think it like a prayer. But so what? I reach out my hand as if praying for her life. Reach! <laughs> I catch her. I stretch out as far as I can from Miss JH's arm and grab Rondo's arm as she falls. Aww. I feel like my shoulders dislocating, I lose my balance and we both tumble down together. <laughs> Stop moving or you'll die. Plus, I'll die. Mr. H descends like a feather as we cling to it. Don't screw up the landing. What do you mean? That's what happened. Once things calmed down, I called Kagome immediately. She answered on the seventh ring. I stood up straight and talked extra politely. Okay. What might it be? I'm gonna die. She is gonna kill me tonight. Uh, um. The call ends before I can defend myself. The motionless beeps of the phone line are very sad. I am dead. I am so dead. We ran away from two avatars and escaped to the roof of who knows what. I tried to catch my breath. I'm exhausted. Unfortunately, when we leapt off the building, a couple of people saw Miss J.H. But only for a moment and in the dark. It should be just another urban legend that no one takes seriously. Hopefully. So they're the kind of people that just do whatever they want with their avatars. 750 years of forced labor would be a light sentence. It's always the same. The community and real society are identical. There are good, good people, bad people, strong people and weak people, taking things from others and having them taken by someone else. How would you manage to piss off guys like that, Rondo Rondo? And you're quite calm now. Is this not the first time they've chased you? <laughs> she laughs through her nose. Crushed. I can tell she means that literally. When you destroy an avatar, the commu connected to it is destroyed too. There's no escaping that rule. So you're a reporter by day and a crime fighter by night? <laughs> I can't tell if that's a sense of justice or something else. So you are... Yes. She challenges me with blue eyes, a strong will without a shred of doubt. Blue eyes? She has green eyes? Or am I going colorblind here? A princess of fire. I feel like I'll get burned if her soul touches me. If those communes are worse than I thought, they've probably been using the avatars to commit real crimes. No one's there to stop them. This is a gentle kingdom where the only things that matter are source and resolve. So, no, I think it's great. Yes. I have no sympathy for the people Rondo crushed. I remember the red color. They took what they wanted and then it was taken from them. They paid the price for their actions. Embers that nearly vanished flow through my blood. I want them to die. And yet something stirs in my chest. Lives are surprisingly cheap, or they're easily broken like a tragedy and a comedy. Even the slightest shred of malice can easily take it away. And yet there is no way to give it back. 
Rondo make, made her decision. I don't know how much will and how much resolve she had behind her actions, but... She's holding a searing heat like an unbreaking lance. I honestly think that's a beautiful way of life. Is she right? Is she wrong? I have no right to judge other people's decisions. There is no one here to judge or punish anyone's conduct. Since no one's made a set of rules, popular opinion is the closest thing we have. Babylon's a hero because the communet made it into one. You look like you're doubting me. No, I'm honest. Look at my eyes. Yeah, my eyes! She poked me. That's all you have to say? Don't use your womanhood only when it suits you. Not pretty girls, cute girls. She turns the other way. Bring those guys here so I can beat some sense into them. She sticks out her tongue and runs around the small roof. A dry place where the pipes and fences are red with rust. The cold light of the rising moon turns it into an imaginary land. Rondo frolics about like a child, almost dancing in the night. The sharpness I glimpsed earlier is nowhere to be seen. What the hell? You have some serious mood swings. No wonder Kimi Zuka was complaining. I think that might be the first time she caught me Akito. You were the one showing me around, and we almost died back there. Are you a bird brain? Oh. Rondo's feet stop right in front of me, her slender hands pull my face closer. She raises her heels to make herself just a bit taller. Her lips cover mine. A kiss. Our shadows overlap below. A short time, only about three blinks long. Our shadows part regretfully after melting together. You like me? Rondo's blue eyes, she has green eyes, reflect my face coldly, vividly, so close I could touch them. Rondo smiles, the first soft, clear, honest smile I've seen all day. The moon silently looks down on us. 